this video I'm going to introduce the substitution rule, also known as U substitution more generally. Before really talking about what the substitution rule is, I want to review the chain rule. And the chain rule states that if you take the derivative of f of g of x, so this is a function within a function, it's equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Let's just do an example here. So I want to take the derivative of sine 3x. We can see that 3x is our inner function g of x, and then of course we have some bigger function sine x. So to take the derivative, first we take the derivative of f of x with gx inside, so this would be cos 3x, and then we multiply by the derivative of g of x, so the derivative of 3x, which is just equal to 3. So our derivative of sine 3x is 3 cosine 3x. I'm going to show you the substitution rule for this exact same question, but we're going to go backwards just to really emphasize that the u-substitution is the opposite of the chain rule. The u-substitution undoes the chain rule. So let's find the integral of 3 cosine 3x. And what we do is we substitute in g of x as u. So we want to find gx, and this should be a dx out here, of course. So 3 cosine 3 of x, I want to simplify this. So I'm going to pick a function to substitute, and that is this inner function 3x. So I'm picking u equals 3x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of u. So I'm going to say du is equal to the derivative of 3x, which is 3 dx. Now here's some nice things you see. First of all, you see that 3x is equal to u, but also we see 3 dx as well. So this 3 dx is going to be our du. So I can actually draw these in with colors so we can see. So 3 dx is our du, and this 3x is our u. So let's do a substitution in this case. So we'll have cosine, and then that 3x is going to become u, and then this 3dx is going to be substituted with du. And now we have a much easier integral to solve. So what is the integral of cos u du? Well, the antiderivative of cosine u is just going to be sine u plus c. Okay, but what is u? Well, we have to substitute back in whatever u is equal to. And of course, we have u right here. So this is just equal to sine of 3x plus a constant. As we can see, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted sine 3x. Of course, the constant here is zero, but we still have the same answer. So we can see this is a reversal of the chain rule. Now let's state this rule formally. Substitution rule. If u equals gx is differentiable on some interval i and continuous on that interval i, then the integral of f gx g prime of x dx is just equal to the integral of f of u du. This is just a formal way of explaining the same thing I've already shown you. Let's do some more examples to kind of get a grasp on how to do this and what to pick as a substitution. So here we have the integral of 1 minus 2x to the 9th dx. Well, Usually what we do is we take a look and we say, what is this inner function here? The inner function we'll pick as u. So we'll pick u is equal to 1 minus 2x. Now let's take the derivative. The derivative of u is just negative 2 dx. Now we have kind of a problem because I see a dx up here, but I don't see a negative 2 anywhere. 
So we can solve in terms of dx, which means that we can say du over 2, so negative du over 2, is equal to dx. Now we have a substitution for dx, and we have a substitution for u. So let's put this in. Again, I'm going to keep using colors because I think it makes it much easier to see when we use colors. So this 1 minus 2x is becoming u, and this is still being raised to the ninth power. And now dx is going to be replaced with negative 1 half du. In fact, maybe I should make this a different color so we can see the different parts times negative one-half du. We can simplify this a little bit. Let's move the negative one-half to the outside of the integral so we don't have to deal with this. And then we can take the integral of u to the nine du. Okay, at this part, we just have to take the antiderivative and we're good. So abandoning all colors, this is equal to negative one-half then the antiderivative of u to the 9 is just u to the 10 over 10. And then, of course, this is just going to be plus c. So we can put in the negative 1 half. This will be negative u to the 10 over 20 plus c. But now we have to make that substitution back in. So we have to make that u equals 1 minus 2x substitution back into u. So this will be equal to negative 1 minus 2x all raised to the 10 over 20 plus c. And we can verify this by taking the derivative. So we can take the derivative of negative 1 over 1 minus 2x to the 10 over 20 plus c. And this is a pretty quick thing to do. So the derivative, we just factor out a negative 1 over 20. Then we take the derivative of 1 minus 2x to the 10. This is just equal to negative 1 over 20 times 10 to the 1 minus 2x to the 9th times, then of course the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2. So we end up with negative 1 over 20 times negative 20 times minus 1 minus 2x to the 9th. And we can see it's the same thing that we started with, which is the integral of 1 minus 2x to the 9th. So you can do the derivative check to make sure that you got your integral right. Let's do another question. The integral of cosine cubed theta sine theta d theta. Well, what do we do here? We can take either cos theta or sine theta as our u. Well, if we take cosine theta as a u, we'll end up with u cubed, and then we'll have to deal with sine theta somehow. But if we just take sine theta, we have this cos cubed theta we still have to deal with, and that's gonna be more work. So let's take u equals to cosine theta. What does this mean? This means that du is going to be negative sine theta d theta. And we have a sine theta here, so this is good. What we can do is we can solve then, we can take negative du is equal to sine theta d theta. And now we see sine theta d theta up here, and we also see u equals cos theta up here. So this will be the integral of u cubed and then, of course, we have negative du. So I'm going to put the du out here. I'm going to take the negative in front of the integral to simplify. Okay, at this point, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So the antiderivative of u cubed is u to the 4 over 4. I shouldn't put the integral sign there. I should say negative u to the 4 over 4 plus c. And that's really all there is to it. Now all we have to do is just substitute back in. So if we substitute back in, we're going to get negative cosine to the 4 theta 
over 4 plus c. And of course, if we want to check to see if this in fact is the correct integral, we can just take the derivative. But it is, so I'm going to not take the derivative for this example. I have one more, and that is the integral of tan theta d theta. It's a little bit more complicated, because the question is, what do we take as u here? Well, let's not forget that the integral of tan theta d theta is the same thing as the integral of sine theta over cosine theta d theta. And now what we can do is we can take u equal to cosine theta and do the same thing as we did before. So we want to get sine theta d theta on the top. So if we take the derivative of u, we get negative sine of theta d theta on the top, which is exactly what we want. And then we put this negative over to the negative du just by multiplying both sides by negative one. Now we can make some substitutions here. So this is equal to the integral. Well, sine theta d theta is now negative du. So let's move the negative to the outside. And this is over cosine theta which is now u. So this is the negative integral of du over u. Okay, well, we've seen this before. If we remember our integral rules, this is just negative the natural log of u plus c. And now we just substitute back in. So what was u? u is equal to cosine of theta. So let's say this is negative natural log of cosine theta plus c. But we can simplify a little bit using our rules of logarithms. So negative log of cosine of theta is the same thing as ln of 1 over cosine theta, these are just our natural log laws, plus c, which is the same thing as saying the natural log of secant theta plus c. So using u substitution, we can see that the integral of tan theta is the natural log of secant theta plus c. Okay, so that was u substitution. If you have any more questions, about indefinite integrals, please ask them below. The next video will be you substitution with definite integrals.